dear students welcome to this lecture on maximum likelihood estimate which relates to parameter estimation and after this lecture i expect that meaning of these terms that is what this likelihood means and what these parameters are should become clear to you so in our discussion so far we have learned there are many different distributions for example we mentioned normal distribution we talked about uniform distribution or a poisson process a binomial distribution and so on and so forth when we were dealing with random variables so these random variables are we typically try to characterize these random variables that what kind of distribution they are following so that we can explain their statistical behavior calculate their expectations higher order moments and so on however one thing that we when we have to determine what is the underlying distribution we need to estimate that what is the specific parameter that is associated with that particular model so for example in normal distribution we need to identify what is mean and what is variance which are typically denoted by mu and sigma square and we call these as parameters of the distribution so as you can see that there are two parameters so this is a by variate distribution where two parameters are associated with this distribution similarly if we talk about bernoullis right in bernoulli as you know uh, two outcomes are possible one is yes and one is no right so typically heads and tails two outcomes or uh, if it is precipitating raining outside yes or no so this typically has outcome as 1 or 0 and we need to determine what is the probability associated with 1 and what is probability associated with 0 p 1 minus p and so on so this would be a univariate parameter because we need to determine only one parameter so we we are essentially dealing with univariate parametric distribution if we are dealing with bernoulli theorem now the point here is that once we determine that this particular data set is coming from a specific distribution however we need to determine that what is the exact value of those parameters so that we can tell the exact shape of that underlying distribution we need to determine these parameters to make this point more clear in the context of earth systems let us consider that we 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 notice the temperature at A, in a given city and you would see that while most of the temperature values they are centered around the mean there would be some outliers so if we are talking about a precipitation uh, a, a temperature time series which looks something like this right and then we try to see that uh, that what would they mean if we have to look at temperature here and on y axis we have the associated frequency or underlying probability or associated probabilities so you would see that this would be fx and this would be temperature which is represented by x now if you look at the distribution right let us assume that temperature of a given city in a follows a normal distribution then you would say that normal distribution this is also normal distribution and if i just shift it slightly that would also be normal distribution so this is also normal distribution and i can generate infinite possibilities where i still have the normal distribution but they are shifted so there are three possibilities that i have plotted out of many 1 2 and 3 now the question is which of these three is out of these three distribution which one is the best representative of this data set and that is why we need to estimate the parameters if we need to completely describe that how this data is being generated now if this is clear let us move to uh, 
understand what these distribution and parameters are in the context of linear regression because we have talked a lot about y is equal to mx plus b. So in this particular case, x is our independent variable, y is our dependent variable and the two parameters that we have are m and b and typically we denote these parameters by a theta vector and theta vector can be written as m and b if we are talking about linear regression. So this is univariate regression because you are regressing y only as function of x and, and m and b are two parameters that we are determining. Similarly, for normal distribution, theta would be mu and sigma or sigma square. So this would be our normal distribution. If you think about any other distribution, for example, let us say uniform distribution where you need upper bound and lower bound where B is upper bound and A is lower bound. You are again dealing with two parameters. So theta vector would consist of A and B. Similarly, as I mentioned, Poisson process would have only one parameter, which would be lambda. So Poisson process can be characterized only using lambda as the underlying parameter. Now, what we need to do is that once we say that, yes, this particular variable or random variable follows a particular distribution, we need to determine what is the value of theta so that we can completely describe the underlying generational process of this data. We'll talk about what is the difference between discriminative and generative model as we go forward. But right now, for sake of simplicity, our target is to determine this theta. Now, there are multiple ways to estimate this value of theta and there are two main schools of thought. So the way this estimation can be done, one is maximum likelihood estimate and second approach is maximum a posterior or map and today we are going to focus on maximum likelihood estimate. Before we go to maximum likelihood estimate, there are certain concepts that we need to know. First is we will assume that our data x1, x2, x3 and so on and you can assume that these are the representations of th these are the samples of temperature that we are talking about for a, uh, uh, for a given city. So x1, x2, x3 up to xn would represent temperature and they are assumed to be IIDs, independent and identically distributed vari uh, variables. Right. So what that, that would mean, it would become more clear when we talk about prob joint probabilities of, of A and B and, uh, and probability of A and B would be equal to probability of A times probability of B if A and B are independent. But and second concept that we need to know before we go to any of these complex looking terms, maximum likelihoods or maximum A posteriori is Bayes rule. I'm sure that many of you are familiar with Bayes rule or Bayes theorem, but this is meant to be a quick refresher in case you have forgotten. So let us try to understand it with a simple example. So when we were talking about time series, we talked about probabilities of A and B. That is, <clears throat> if we have to understand the joint probability distribution of A and B, we can write this as probability of A given B multiplied by probability of B and this would also be equal to probability of B given A multiplied by probability of A. So I'm marking this as 1 and marking this as 2 and needless to say 1 has to be equal to 2. So I can write this as probability of A given B times probability of B is equal to probability of B given A times probability of A which implies probability of A given B is equal to probability of B given A times probability of A upon 
probability of b and this we call this simple rule we call as bayes rule so bayes rule helps us determine what is the conditional probability of occurrence of a given of an event a or a random variable taking a certain value and this bayes rule will help us determine the maximum likelihood estimate of the parameters or maximum a posteriori of parameters that we will base on this bayes rule or bayes theorem now let us consider that we are interested in determining that what is the value of theta given that we observe some data set so if we are interested in probability of theta given x we can always write it as probability of x bar given certain theta times probability of occurrence of theta divided by probability of x bar so if you can see that this one uh, uh, i would say 3 and 4 they are exactly similar only it's a matter of notation where we have replaced a and b by the vectors where a represent a, a, a is replaced by the parameter vector b is replaced by the data vector itself and in this case x vector would be x1 x2 x3 and so on and theta vector would be either mu and sigma if you are talking about normal distribution lambda if you are talking about poisson process <coughs> a and b if you are talking about uniform distribution and so on now let us try to understand this is the most important result that will form the backbone of entire discussion that we are going to have about maximum likelihood estimates and maximum a posteriori estimates now this term probability of x given theta is called as likelihood and this will become clear very soon that why this is called as likelihood we call probability of theta as prior and probability of x vector as evidence and here on left hand side probability of theta bar or or theta vector given x vector is terms as posteriori now if you go back to these two terms we need to determine what is the maximum likelihood estimate and what is the maximum a posteriori if we need to identify that what is the best possible theta that would explain this data or given that we have observed this particular data set what is the value of theta that is most likely to uh, be generating this particular uh, observation or series of observations if we are talking about vectors